Kenya. The Eastern African country is famous for its diverse geography from the coast on the Indian Ocean and low plains to the central highlands. This richness is also reflected in the country's biodiversity, attracting millions of tourists each year. Western Kenya, approximately 400 kilometers from the capital city of Nairobi, is a region of dense agriculture. Agriculture is a main contributor to Kenya's economy. Unfortunately, Kenya's soils are being degraded through often unsustainable land management practices. This causes declining agricultural yields and deterioration of land quality. The degradation is mainly caused by nutrient depletion, acidification and erosion, all of which affect the ability of the land to support agricultural production. For more than a decade, the country has experienced a downward production trend of crop and livestock. Action is needed. Oh, it is affecting farmers in a number of ways. One, it's like uh, uh, the yields that they were getting initially, which were high, they have uh, started realizing a decline in production. And if that is the case, then it is affecting them in terms of uh, food availability, accessibility, and um, uh, by, by so doing, it is affecting their income. Despite the gravity of the current situation, there are many things that can be done to reverse the degradation trend and yield declines. Some farmers are using them already. In order to understand these options and opportunities, the Economics of Land Degradation Initiative provides new empirical data and concrete recommendations for national and local policy making. The University of Leeds in the UK led this GIZ-funded study, designed the methodology and undertook the data collection analysis, supported by Kenya-based partners Calro and Stockholm Environment Institute. So we conducted a study in Western Kenya, looking at three counties, Bungoma, Siaya and Kakamega, and we are looking at the economics of land degradation, specifically focusing on the economics of soil fertility management at the farm level. So we did uh, surveys with farmers. We also used an exist existing data set uh, for a project that's implemented uh, through the support of GIZ. But we also had extensive consultations with policymakers and farmers and other stakeholders at the county and local levels. And we've made specific recommendations to the county governments, the three county governments, as well as we've made recommendations to the national government. The study has demonstrated that sustainable land management can have a positive impact on yields while benefiting the soils too. Technologies that had low costs provided considerably higher yield benefits within a relatively short period of time. For example, manuring provides quick returns after one year, with benefits outweighing the implementation cost by a factor of 2.5. Also, intercropping provides positive returns to the farmer. Secondly, for technologies that have higher upfront costs, such as the construction of erosion-preventing terraces, it takes longer, sometimes up to five years, until farmers reap benefits from their investments. This often requires support from external sources to help bridge the period between the initial investment outlay and the returns on such investments. In order to facilitate investments in sustainable land management, the study gives concrete recommendations, one of which is to extend subsidies for sustainable land management practices. Important as well are the support for agricultural innovation systems and an improved monitoring of land management and yield relationships, while also offering capacity building for farmers. These recommendations have already been shared on county and national level and are partly reflected in a draft National Agricultural Soil Management Policy. Changing land management practices is possible and it is worth it for both the farmers as well as for the whole society of Kenya.